on the ending but uh I love yeah. you I love you Fran and uh, have a great night you guys hi everybody I'm Jan and you may recognize me as a member and the audience <laughs> <laughs> hi everybody I'm Jan and you write fuck <laughs> <laughs> hi everybody I'm Jan and you may recognize me as an audience member from the musical Everybody's talking about Janet! And I'm Andrew Barrett Cox, and you might recognize me as the 13-year-old boy who fell asleep during the third act of the Lord of the Rings musical. And welcome back <laughs> to another episode of Me, No Mighty Boom, where we talk about Drag Race UK! Whoa! Remember that episode where Michelle Massage said, And being a black woman, I got a little offended. And none of us said anything. We let that slide. Cha-cha slide. To the left! I'm the best dancer at St. Bernadette's. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chacha Eagle Gordon, the best dancer at St. Bernadette's. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of, um, uh, sorry. <laughs> so, the queens come back into the workroom. Wait, did we say welcome to the second episode? Yep. Work. The queens come back into the workroom after a wacko first episode. Yeah, um... Where Gothy Kendall, Gothy Kendall went home. I think of a place where there's love overflowing. She... Um, walked backwards and said, Miss Kendall, Miss Kendall. This is a huge deal for Kendall. And uh, it was endearing, and uh, we will miss her. Yeah. But they come back in, and everyone's like, wow, this is real. We're on a show. Right. <laughs> my, that's my favorite thing every single time. Everyone's like, oh, wow, it really gets real. Someone's going home each and every week. Yeah. Yes. And then Vinegar's like, Run and, go, and erases the mirror. <laughs> New day in the workroom, right. and things are getting a little crazy. And this, so they come in, and Rue is having them do this mini challenge, yes. which I was like, oh, this was like kind of fucking rude. So the Vivian who won last week now has to put her competitors in a line. I'm putting myself on your line. On one end, there's a sign that says bottom, and one end that says top, and she has to put her competitors in a line on where she thinks they rank. Right. And if I was the winner of that, I would be like, fuck, you just fucked me the fuck over. Right. Well, I mean, but I think that the Vivian is not afraid of water to share her opinion. So to be honest, I think that the Vivian, well, here's the thing, it's a double-edged sword, because I think the Vivian is somebody who's going to be truthful, and it's not going to be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, like, the Vivian kind of went for it. So either it's really, really good for her because she's being honest, but also I would actually like to see somebody who was a little more quiet. I... Playing it a little more safe to then be like, okay, well, this is the true tea. She places Cheryl relatively low and um, they're kind of playing into this feud that they are going to have. And as Lady Gaga said, What's Fortnite? I think it's kind of foreshadowing what's going to happen yes. to for the rest of this episode. On the bottom, she puts the youngest and the one who's been doing drag for the least, Scaredy Cat. Yeah, and Scaredy's like. Also, Scaredy was like, yeah, I was expecting it. Cut, cut to Scaredy like on the verge of tears. When you cried, I'd wipe away all your tears. Right. Like, Scaredy was like, like, you could tell Scaredy was like about to burst out crying. Right. Or it seems well, like. she, I mean, she's 19 years old. Like, RuPaul hits her with a gag and is like, great, well now you and Scaredy Cat are going to be going head to head in this acting challenge. Gaggy. Gaggy. I got chills thinking about it. I got chills! 
Um, and then... We're multiplying And I'm losing control Cause the power you're supplying It's electrifying Then they break off into teams and each of them chooses their own team. There's basically two teams. The tops that Vivian chose and then the bottoms that Vivian chose. <laughs> My favorite is just like the bottom queens are like, you know what would be really, really cool? If we, we won. won. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but that would that would be really cool. I'm like, yeah, that'd be really awesome. I like this cast. I think that they're fun. I think that in, in my opinion, I think that they are very self-aware what they're doing. They know that they're only Paul's Drag Race. I also love that they like make fun of American gay culture yes. for most yes. of this episode. It's hysterical. Because they're all just like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> <coughs> and then we go to the acting challenge. <coughs> so we get to the first team's acting challenge, which we have a bag of chips. The we Vivian! The Vivian, we have um, Cheryl Wong. Teagues, um, yeah, we have uh, Theory Mugler, Something Wong, and uh, Vinegar Strokes. Vinegar strokes. <laughs> These sunglasses that Vinegar is wearing. <laughs> the sunglasses that she's wearing are literally like, like everyone's in like period garb, and then she has these like checkered sunglasses. I kind of live for it. I love like taking the taking it the piss out of the period. Literally. And just being like, yep, yeah, I have these 60s glasses. My glasses! I, I love it. Um, the Vivian does a pretty good job. Like I buy yeah. her I buy her as this actual character. Was she right. but was she like hilarious? No, but I was like, I you could be on TV right now as this character. I'd right. I buy it. Uh, I think Vinegar does a pretty good job too. Yeah, Vinegar does good. Exactly. And yeah. um, something is okay. Yes. Here's the thing. I have to say, I thought that something was going to be a lot worse in the actual Well, they set it up. Film. That, yeah, exactly. They, they set, set it up, it up that, that she was going to be. Something was like, I'm about to suck dick. <laughs> and then they did it and it was fine. It's rare that I laugh out loud. And then Bag of Chips came on screen. And I said, yeah, this is the kind of person I love to watch. Yeah. I could watch Bag of Chips just like be a fucking moron forever. She's hysterical. Hilarious. She definitely took risks. She was improv Like this shit where she literally was like rolling him into a burrito was absolutely hysterical. Like and Michelle could- I just kept going with it. I was like, good the fuck for you. Like you're making choices. <laughs> like, and just... like, th so iconic. Like that's my, one of my favorite moments. Like of truly, the, it is my favorite moment of the season so far. And I, oh. I, I have a hard time believing that something will beat that. We've only done one floor show. Oh my god, me and Yaska. Max there. <laughs> 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 like literally brilliant. So then the second group gets to the stage. This group was, you know, kind of the underdogs. He was always real shy, real kind of quiet guy. Right, but they were determined. Um, yeah, they really, they thought, yeah, yeah. I thought Davina was good. I thought Davina was the best. Yes. I thought that Crystal had really funny moments Crystal too. Crystal got there at the dinner table. Yeah, this is what Michelle said. I thought she got there even before then. Oh really? Yeah, I thought she was funny throughout. Um, I thought Cheryl was also good too. And then we get back to the workroom and they uh, are told that they have to serve a Bond girl look. Yeah. And um, while they're getting ready, they are talking a little bit about something Wong's um, upbringing and relationship with their parents. Um, some of the girls are speaking about like you know their relationship with their parents, but something is leading the conversation and saying that her parents don't know that she's living with her partner. A five don't know years, that she does yeah. drag. It seems to have been a very positive experience for her. So very happy for you, something Wong. And then we get to the runway. Yeah, Rue looks great. I love this look. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my favorite fucking people on this goddamn planet, um, Jan loves Game of Thrones. I love Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. Jon Snow, Cersei Lannister, the Daenerys Targaryen. And um, I'm really excited to have Maisie here. She is so hard. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't know. Uh, now I now I see who that is. Oh, I'm Maisie the Bird and I live in that tree. 
I have not seen her since she was at Palm Springs going to see the Circus Mogurkas. Let's talk about, talk about, talk about, talk about me! Daisy Williams, who plays Arya Stark on Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. And I'm so excited that she's here. I love Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. And I think that she um, is a great person to have as a judge for the acting challenge. Cool. And then we have Graham Norton, Wild, who has been seen um, in amazing films like another gay movie. And then we hit the runway for their best dreams. Dreams. Well, um, first up is the Vivian, and um, she's kind of giving me, um, uh, what does this look like? Oh, it looks like Raja's, um, uh, cake, 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 oh, the chocolate cake outfit that she made, it's very that fabric. I see it with the hood, yeah. I like how it's like two-tone metallic, it's like purple, but it's also green. I think she looks pretty. Yeah, I think it's, it's beautiful. It's cool, I wasn't like flipping out the shirt. Yeah, it wasn't like my favorite thing that I've seen, but definitely polished and definitely looks good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a Helena for me. A Helena for me. Next up is Something Wong. Unfortunately, Something looks like any drag queen that I would see out of a nightclub. This seems like something you would just pull out of your, yeah, the stuff that you have. I like that she was bald. I thought that was a really, really fun touch. I don't understand the fur. Yeah, I didn't like this look. Yeah. I guess I didn't like this look either. The next up on the runway is Vinegar Strokes! Uh, I gotta say, uh, I didn't like this look. Didn't like this look? I like this hair on Vinegar. We're getting something different and new from her. The next up on this faggot ass stage. Wait, you gotta say, oh, I didn't like it either. Cool. The next up on the stage is my favorite drag queen, Bag of Chips. Just dressed as Liza Minnelli, so fucking rogue. I'm sorry. I'm well, sorry. It's amazing and like what? Oh. Huh? <laughs> no, I mean from the UK. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Let's get technical. Let's get physical. She's literally like one of the like aliens from Men in Black. That's like yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like which one of y'all's evil? Oh. Yo, mama. It's very bag of chips, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm Mrs. Loves It. Alrighty, uh, I'm Mrs. Loves It as well. The next up on the runway is Cheryl Ho. For me, okay, all tea is she comes out. This one was the most Bond girl for yes, me. Yes, I totally agree. Like, I understood, I, like, I was like, oh, I get it, James Bond, like, you got a gun. Right. You got this hair wing, it's yeah, she's 60s. like, yeah, it's like, oh, I have that jacket on right now. Oh, I'm being so, so discreet. And then she's like, bam, and then has the garter with the gun. I, love, I bought it. Yeah, I love this um, color on Cheryl, too. I feel like Cheryl's typically very blonde. I love that she's switching it up. Uh, I'm Mrs. Lovesett. I'm Mrs. Lovesett as well. Yeah. All right. So the next. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So. Oh, sorry. All right. So the next up is Crystal, and this is probably one of, if not my favorite, runways of the night. I love it. I love that she went through this whole like bondage, like James bondage. I love the concept. I love the high pony. I love that she's tied up. I love that she has the whip. I don't know. I thought it was a really, really strong concept, and I just liked her execution on it. I like anything fetishy. I like anything that looks dangerous. I love the bondage knots that she has tied up. Yeah. I also love that um, she has no. Uh, she has armpit hair. I was literally just about to say, and also love the armpit hair. I do too. Yeah. I just love it. Yeah. RuPaul's like, why is this? And then your girl was like, uh, it's kind of progressive. And they were like, okay. Next up is scary. <laughs> Literally dressed as a cat. Michelle was like, are you gonna paint like a cat every time? And she's like, yeah. Um, Some girls look just the same, not changing their makeup. Oh my I'm god. I'm not gonna say, say no names, Roxy, Roxy and Bruce. Um, this look was a really weird to me. I was like, why are we on the Dudley Do Right ride at like, or what was that ride at Universal? Oh, the Rocky, the Rocky yeah. and Bullwinkle ride. Whatever yeah. the fuck that was, it was really weird. I I, I think that it's a, a cool concept. I um, It's a Helena for me. It's a Helena for me as well. The next up is Divinade Campo, and she Divinate comes Campo. out with an eye patch, her classic red hair, this like black like dress with a fur around it. Oh, I like it. 
I think it's cute. It's not my favorite look of the night, but I definitely think that it's a strong one. I got like James Bond villain. So Divinade, I give a Helena on this one. Helena, yeah. Blue Hydrangea comes out and I say, much better, much better. I love this look. Yeah, I don't really understand Blue's uh, <laughs> point of view on this, but like, I live for it because I mean, I the, get Bond, it. the Bond girls always have like these double entendre names like Pussy Galore and like, you know, those are the things. So like, I like this kind of like little bit of campy funniness to it. I like three tits. I, I like zero, zero, 007 on the tits. Yeah, really fucking funny. But and I get it. I love this headpiece too. Yeah, it's like very like futuristic alien. No, I give it a, a, a Mrs. Loveset. I give it a Mrs. Loveset. So then we get to the main challenge and they're watching it on the runways. And um, for the most part, I think it pretty much goes to how we think it would go based off of what we saw with Michelle while they were actually doing the challenge. Yes. The only thing I guess that I was surprised to see was how good something actually did. I, I thought that she did a better job than yeah. what I thought she was going to, yeah. just based off the narrative that they were trying editors, to tell these us. Sneaky editors. Crazy. Um, <laughs> and then we find out that the winning team of this week, who is all safe, is it's Trinity! You <laughs> turned it, bitch! Clap a lot of folks! is Team The Vivian with the win going to none other than Mash Bag! Bag of Chips! <laughs> and yeah. then we find out that the bottom team is Mash Bag! Oh my god. Blood Easter! Mash Bag! The team that uh, is all up for elimination is Scaredy Cat's team. And we find out that the bottom three are Blue Hydrangea. Yes. Um, Scaredy Cat. And Cheryl. And then they get backstage. Yeah, they all go to the back. And Blue says, <laughs> so many emotions. Yeah, Blue's really upset. Um, and the kind of culmination that we saw at the beginning of the episode with the Vivian and Cheryl it happens. It all comes out. And uh, yeah, they basically are like, Cheryl, we don't think that you're being yourself. You're acting like we're not Edwards, you're saying like, yes, God, mama, honey. Very like the Laganja syndrome. And Cheryl's like, I, I do talk like that. Right. No, Cheryl's like, <laughs> yeah, we're on a fucking TV show. I'm playing it up. Sorry. Right. She says that it's hard to stand out in a bunch of people with a lot of personalities when you're all new and getting to know each other. So. I don't blame her for trying to figure out ways to make herself heard and, and you know. But <laughs> I, was, oh, oh, oh. I was flatlining and I don't know what her character went. I mean, I'm I'm her, she, she shouldn't be such, such a bitch. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's kind of talking about the problems between. Look the girls, me. and they're talking about something, and Cheryl, and <laughs> Scary Cat straight up like, oh, because Davina's also upset as well, because she's like, I'm not living up to the expectation that I have for myself, right. I'm very well known in the scene, I've been around for a long time, and she feels Yo, like she's not girl. Yeah. Yeah. What we are telling you is what it, it takes. takes. And I'm not gonna steer you wrong, not for no We're goddamn TV, TV show. Scary Cat, all while this is happening with Davina, something, and Cheryl is like, um, everyone's talking about <laughs> these other issues, and I think I'm gonna lip sync, so. Lops. <laughs> Cheryl's stunning. Cheryl looks so good. She looks She's beautiful. So, right? so we watch the winning group, and then they're like, you win, and then they talk about everybody, they talk about, talk about, talk about, talk about me. Talk about, talk about, talk about, talk about, talk about. And then we have the bottom three, and we find out that. Um, Blue Hydrangea and Scary Cat are lip syncing against each other. Yes, and I was actually surprised um, to see Blue in the bottom. I was also well, well, like not not surprised based off of the actual performance, but like I thought Blue should have been in the top last week. I think was would. I was baffled that their lip sync song was the theme song to the Venus commercial. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your desire. You know, yeah, like from the no, razor. Literally, yeah. I'm your Maybe in London it's different, but from in America I know that as the Razor commercial in yeah, the early 2000s. Yeah, truly. Just this. Oh. <laughs> well, it looks like I need a Venus right here. Am I right, ladies? Your Venus. I thought that Blue did a better job than Scaredy, and uh, uh, the judges agreed. I thought that it was a pretty good lip sync. Well, I was surprised. I mean, Scaredy was like, I've never performed on a stage. I was like, great. Uh, straight up. 
straight up. But Rue kind of gives a cryptic, like, Shangela season two message where it's like, I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of you yet. Like, she gives, like, a version of that too scary. So I'm wondering if she will come back for season two or Honestly, that would be kind of funny. <coughs> Because she's young, and apparently, you know, yeah. I, I mean, like, we don't really get to see much of her personality on this show, but obviously she has something enough that Rue and the judges would take her onto the show and want to showcase her in any sort of light. My favorite exit line of all time. Hers. Scaredies. Oh yeah, not a bad first gig. Yeah. Really funny. <laughs> Hysterical. I want someone to um, go to the back of the stage and then pull out a lipstick and just have their name on it and say, I'm going home. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Not Me, Not Hermione. We will see you next week and have a good one. <laughs> I'm Jan. And I'm Angie Barry Cox. And we will see you next episode. Bye, everybody. Ba, 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 ba. I don't know what the James Bond <laughs> When the sky was falls. the Incredibles? I was <laughs> <laughs>